Howdy and welcome to another quick Bevy tutorial. Today we're going to look at integrating OpenAI's text generation into a Bevy game. You've probably seen OpenAI's ChatGPT model floating around the internet. And while that doesn't have an API yet, they do offer some weaker models currently that you can use to experiment with text generation in games. This will also be a great opportunity to learn about async tasks in Bevy. These are a powerful tool for any work you need to do that might take longer than a single frame. These can be local tasks like generating a large procedural mesh, or it can be waiting on an API call like we'll be doing here. So even if you don't end up using this specific API, I hope these techniques will help you use other interesting tools with Bevy and grow your Bevy knowledge. So I can't get into too much detail about how these models work without going into an hour lecture on modern machine learning. But the basic idea is that we'll give the model a prompt, and then it will try to generate the text that should continue that prompt. Think of it like the predictive options you've seen when texting, but hopefully it's more powerful. OpenAI has a giant docs page which includes guides about how to use these models for text generation and other features they offer. I really like the sections that give you guidance on crafting proper prompts because I found that to be critical to getting meaningful results. They also have more practical information to help you if you want to use this in production, but we're still very far from that right now. Finally, let's talk about pricing. For text, OpenAI offers four models and they all differ in price by orders of magnitude. In my testing, the Curry model seems to be pretty close to DaVinci, but of course it costs more money for a reason, so try all of them out. You can see the pricing is by token, which seems to be pretty close to one token is one word, but it's off due to things like punctuation, I guess. If you've never used OpenAI's APIs before, then you can use the $18 free credit, which will only last a few months, and all I think you need to do is give them a valid phone number. If you're like me and blew the trial years ago, then you'll need to set up billing. I personally have a fear of putting my API calls into a system that runs every frame and blowing my entire budget, so I've set a super low limit just for testing, and I still haven't even broke 5 cents yet. Overall, if you have a dollar to blow or the free trial, I think it's a fun thing to toy around with for the night, and it seems like it might become a big thing in the future. Alright, so let's get started integrating this into a game. Thankfully, someone has already made a nice simple crate that does all of the API calling for us. I'm just going to grab this OpenAI API Rust crate and put it into our Toml, and this seems to give us a nice type safe way to use the API. All the builder functions here correspond to settings in the OpenAI docs, and they can be fun to tweak around with when testing on your own. Now in our game, I'm going to create a function called OpenAI, and this will take a string that we'll use as the prompt, and it will return the string back that the API will give us. Here, I grab my private key from an environment variable, which you can generate on OpenAI's website. Of course, be very careful with this key, and don't add it to any repo you plan on publishing, especially if you've linked your credit card to the site. Then, all we need to do is create a client by giving it the key. Now, I want to process the prompt. The given prompt here will be what the player types into an input box, so I want to follow the doc's advice and give it some context before and after the prompt. I'm going to tell the AI that it's a dwarf and give it some information about surrounding gameplay areas. My original use for this was the Dwarf Fortress clone, where instead of telling you the stats about the dwarf, they would hopefully be able to communicate how they are feeling in plain English, and maybe even with an accent. But the open models don't seem to be strong enough for all of that yet. Next, we need to use the completion args builder and give it my prompt, the generation engine I want to use, a limit on how much money to spend, and a couple of other parameters to try to get the model to give the type of answer I want. Then we build and unwrap the completion arg. Finally, we just need to call complete prompt sync, and this should return when the call is complete. Notice I'm using the sync version of the call, and this will block until the API returns which if you use in a system, it will lock your game up for an indeterminate period of time. If you use the async version, then later on we'll run into problems because Bevy does not play well with the Tokyo context, and there doesn't seem to be a super easy workaround to that. In my opinion, this is a bit of a hole in Bevy's design, but these are the less used parts of the API, so I'll let it pass. Now after that returns, we can just get the choices from the results and return that to the caller of the function and we have our response. Next, let's handle the Bevy parts of the project. To handle the delay of using the API, 
we're going to wrap all of this into a bevy async compute task. These allow for functions that take multiple frames to be run without blocking the game. I'm going to make a function called spawn task, which will need a mutable borrow to commands and the prompt. Notice this still isn't a system and is just a helper function. Now we need to call async compute task pool colon colon get, which appears to be a singleton that is set up by the default plugins. Now using that thread pool, we just need to call spawn and give it our async function. The syntax here is a bit advanced, so I'll point you to the Rust book and the Crust of Rust streams to learn more about what's going on here. But all we need to know is that we are calling our function, and the thread pool will run it on another thread, and will give us the return value when we finish. Notice how the type here is task with the generic parameter of the return type of our function. This string is our response, and you can have basically anything returned from your task. Next, all we need to do is wrap this in a component and spawn an entity that we can query for later to see if the task is finished. Now let's get the actual task spawned and pull its response. I'm going to use the same eGUI setup I did for my last video on eGUI to handle getting user input and printing the results, but this should be the same flow no matter how you tie it into your game. You don't even really need to get a prompt from the user if you can generate it based on game state, like in my Dwarf Fortress example. Here, we need to query for all of the entities with our API task. Then, we'll loop over them, and we'll use the futures light crate to pull the task once. If the task is finished, then this will return the string, otherwise it will return none. All we need to do with the string is write it to the eGUI local state, and then we'll display it as a label in the UI. We also need to remember to despawn the entity of the task once we get the data from it, so that way we don't keep pulling it every frame. To actually call our function now, all we need to do is set up an eGUI text field, and again have this modify the local state to save the text between frames. Now when the user clicks the prompt button, we'll call our spawn task function with the value that the user put in the edit field, and this will create our task and call the API. That's really all we need to do, and now when we run the game, we can type into our field, hit prompt, and as long as we have a valid API key, then after some time, the game will populate our answer into the GUI. Here are a couple of runs of me trying to talk to our dwarf and the prompt that OpenAI received. You can see that it will take some post-processing of the response to get anything super useful out of this, but it seems promising enough that you might be able to make a cool game jam experience out of it. Specifically, it seems to like to return an empty response or to ignore the stop string sometimes. It also seems to return all underscores, which my guess is this is some response that got censored by OpenAI for whatever reason. Overall, I hope this was helpful to show off a cool tool you can consider playing with, and for showing off a practical example of using Bevy's async task, which are very powerful and don't get used often enough in my experience. Literally, all we needed to do was call spawn to create the task, and then pull it in a system to get the results a few frames later. As always, please remember to like and subscribe, and a massive thank you to all of my Patreons who make things like this possible. Thank you for watching.